Darkest Dungeon, developed by Red Hook Games, is the latest early access title to take Steam by storm. This striking Lovecraftian RPG puts the player in charge of a group of very, very mortal adventurers who seek to explore, plunder, and eventually rebuild a cursed and decrepit estate. And yes, this does sometimes mean slamming a giant spider in the head with a mace. The moment-to-moment -moment dungeon crawling in Darkest Dungeon always presents an interesting tactical challenge. You'll spend a lot of time carefully managing the positions of your units and of the unholy enemies you'll be facing. That high-level occultist of yours isn't nearly as effective or safe once he's been dragged out of his comfort zone. The challenge isn't just limited to combat, either. Dungeon delving is dangerous even before enemies show up. You'll need to manage food and torches. Heroes can't fight on holy zeal alone, after all. Gathered close in tenuous firelight and uneasy companionship. Failing to keep these basic needs met will contribute to an increase in stress, and a high stress level often means a low success level. Here, Brickville the Crusader succumbs to his stress, developing the short-term masochistic affliction. He's given himself over to his deepest feelings of guilt, and will begin refusing any attempts made to heal him. And while hallways are filled with enemies and pitfalls, the biggest challenge is managing the specific quirks of your adventurers. Other party-based RPGs require the player to keep the strengths and weaknesses of their characters in mind, but Darkest Dungeon has a much broader idea of what strengths and weaknesses might mean. While some character quirks are basic buffs and debuffs, Slugger, for instance, which gives a bonus to melee damage, others fundamentally change how the characters act, both in and out of combat. When two of my best characters developed kleptomania, it meant they automatically rushed to grab any treasure they found. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Challenging tactical combat, interesting progression systems, permadeath, the whole thing feels a lot like XCOM if XCOM characters had a lot more, well, character. Great heroes can be found even here, in the mud and rain. Case in point. This is Boosk, a rookie bounty hunter. He's a bit of a mixed bag. Irrepressible makes him a little more likely to keep his cool when his stress levels are high, and Warrior of Light gives him bonus damage so long as I keep the torch well lit. Unfortunately, the quirk Shocker ups his chances of being stunned. Worse, Boosk apparently tore his rotator cuff before we recruited him, giving him a flat 5% melee damage decrease. Not quite sure how our employee screening let that one through. The important thing, though, is that this unique set of quirks will separate him from any other bounty hunters I might recruit throughout my campaign. In Darkest Dungeon, bounty hunters are flexible fighters that can control battlefield positioning. Watch here as he pulls this gruesome swine drummer out of the safety of the back row, so that my other characters can finish him off. As the light gains purchase, Spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. Characters in Darkest Dungeon grow and change with time. Unfortunately for Boosk, it was only a few hallways later that he ran into this group of swine wretches who paid him back for his earlier success by infecting him with Creeping Cough, a negative quirk that really hurts him offensively and defensively. Fortunately, I was able to earn enough to send him off to the sanitarium to get that fixed, and after a few more missions, I could even afford to upgrade his gear and his skills. In the end, every plan relies upon a strong arm and tempered steel. Busk was ready for prime time. I slotted him in with Bernard, a sort of battle cleric built to debuff enemies and then smash them in their faces. Renald, an occultist who had an ability that specifically opened up bad guys for Busk's most powerful attack. And Renault, 
my most experienced and quirky hero. They set off to hunt the Necromancer's Apprentice, one of the game's earliest bosses. Power, fierce, terrible, nightmare made material. I'd love to tell you that there was a dramatic come from behind victory, or even a climactic failure, but the truth is, Busk was ready. There was a brief moment that I thought the stress might get to him, but he held firm and delivered the killing blow. With no living sinew to actuate them, will these walking bones finally fail? Busk came out of the fight a little winded, but also with a confidence that he would always find his target. Unfortunately for him, in Darkest Dungeon, that sort of confidence is a killer. For more on Darkest Dungeon, check out my article on pacemagazine.com slash games.